In this video, I'm going to use reinforcement learning to control a lander vehicle using a PPO agent, which is proximal policy optimization, and a custom MATLAB environment to model dy dynamics. The vehicle is going to have a couple of proportion uh, thrusters, one for the left and one for the right, that are going to control uh, the horizontal position, the vertical position, and the angle of the vehicle. The goal is to reach this point, 0, 0, with an angle of zero that is uh, with the uh, oriented vertically and also at a slow velocity, uh, vertical velocity because if it is a high velocity then it's going to crash down here. So in order to simplify the the problem instead of have contiguous uh, uh, forces for the proportion thrusters there's going to be three velocities, low, medium and high. So there's gonna be they're gonna be discretized in nine possibilities, uh, three by three, nine. So you can see all the possibilities in here. For the observation, the observation is gonna be the position of the vehicle x y, the angle of the vehicle, the velocities of the positions, the angular velocity, and finally a signal that has three values: negative one, one, and zero. Zero means that it's in the air. Negative one it means that it crashed and one it means that has had a soft landing at the right place. So it's a, a vector of seven elements for the observation and a vector of two elements for the actor action because it's uh, the left and right uh, uh, thrusters. So there, for the reward you can see the formula in here uh, basically we have a penalty, a negative value uh, for the left and right thruster effort, the less effort the better we have a penalty for not being oriented vertically. If the angle is not equal to zero, then we get a penalty. Also, we have the distance from the, from the vehicle to the target, and we have the velocity of the vehicle. And the lower this, the higher it is. So the higher relative to the previous value of this, it means that you're making progress. So you're gonna get uh, a reward for making progress. And then we have a big progress, I mean, sorry, a big reward at the end if we achieve a good landing, a soft landing. That is, if your position, vertical position is zero, if your uh, velocity is higher than negative 0 0.5, and you might wonder what happens if you have 50. If you have 50 value, means that you're going upwards. So he doesn't care if you go upwards. He assumes that if you reach here, it's because your velocity is negative. Otherwise, you will not be here. So that's why it's equal or higher than negative 0 0.5 because you're going downwards. And also, the horizontal velocity is zero, the absolute value is less than 0 0.5, which means that you're stable horizontally as well. So that's basically the condition for the soft landing, which is uh, including the reward. And here's more description of, of it. And that's going to be captured, the reward uh, and the, the dynamics, as I mentioned before, in the this lander vehicle custom environment. So let's go to the example. So here is the, the lander vehicle, and here's the class for the lander vehicle. It's extending MATLAB environment, and which in, in turn, it's ex it extends uh, the abstract environment. So we have the, the mass, the gravity, other parameters of the simulation. And we have the constructor. In the constructor, we're going to cre create a numeric spec because we have contiguous, seven contiguous uh, elements for the observation, as I mentioned before. We have the two contiguous action, uh, action uh, values. But uh, we are not in this example using contiguous. Notice this update action info. If we go down here, you're going to see the nine possibilities that we had. And those possibilities are going to be pairs, nine pairs. So you have two values for the two thrusters, and they're going to be a finite spec. So we have a discrete action space in here. OK. So we have the observation and the actions, which are going to be the interface between the, the environment and the agent. So we call the parent constructor and then update action info and uh, have some initial values. So there are some getters and setters for the properties of this class. And we have so me as a method for plotting, visualizing the, the dynamics. 
and we have a step function. This is important for all reinforcement learning environments. It's basically the method that is called for each step within an episode in reinforcement learning. And you can see in here that we're going to update the, the position, the velocities, and we're going to actually get them from the current, the, the current uh, observation. And then we compute here the soft collision and the rough collision. So this is the condition that we saw if the velocity is equal or higher than negative 0 0.5 and the absolute value is less than 0 0.5, then it means that, and if of course uh, you touch ground, then you have a soft collision, but if otherwise, then you have a rough collision. And those conditions are gonna be used in this if else to code the, the final observation, which I mentioned that is negative one, one and zero. Zero if you're airborne still. So that is going to concatenate it into the rest of the observation vector to have the next observation. And you can see here that you compute the reward based on the soft collision, you get the 500 reward. And also all the, the formulas that I showed in the article are here for, to compute the reward. And also the dynamics are calling here at some point, you can see it in here. So the next, the next velocity the next uh, the action is useful the action that which is the proportion is used to compute this and if you go down into the dynamics there's a dynamics method in here that are going to use the proportions the the thruster uh, forces to compute the position the next positions and velocities as well okay so let's go back to the environment and now we have the environment in here and from the environment we can get these methods, these are methods that belong to the a MANLAB custom environment, do not belong to the class itself that we see here. Those methods are declared in the parent classes. If you hit control D uh, and then go to this class and then to the parent class in the abstract environment, you're gonna see those methods declared in there. Okay, so Yeah, you can see that it's a method, although it looks like a function, but it's really a method of the environment. So with that, we get the actual info and we get a uh, nine possible elements, which are nine pairs. So if you do this, pick up the first one, you can see that this means that the, the, the left thruster and right thrusters are turned off or turn, uh, or turn on. So you can see that we have two outputs for each thruster. Then for the observation, we have a seven possible values that, that go from negative infinity to infinity. We have we could have a limit the final observation to negative one, one, and zero, but I guess it's okay. For reproducibility, we're gonna use set the seed of randomization to zero. And now let's create the PPO agent. I'm going to put uh, this in the description of this video a link to another video showing uh, more details about the proximal policy optimization agent, the PPO. And for here, we're just going to create it. So we start by determining the number of observations, which is seven. And this is the sizes of the internal layers of both critic and actor networks. For the critic network, as always, you have the input observation and the output is going to be the long-term reward. So you're going to have a, a single value in the, in the end and seven inputs and fully connected layers and railroad layers in between. Pretty normal. And we have a, a, an array of layers. We convert them to a DL network. And then we can observe it uh, like this. We can see it in here. So you can see the seven observations, fully connected layers, ReLU, and finally we got the uh, reward at the end. Okay, so for the critic, uh, yeah, so now we have the critic network and the observation information, which is the interface again between the agent and environment, and we create our critic. We use the RL value function, and if you go to the documentation of reinforcement learning toolbox uh, for the agents, you're going to see that each agent has a recommended function for the critic and recommended function for the actor. This RL value function is the one recommended for the critic. So for the actor, it is discrete categorical actor, which takes the actor network, the observation info information and the action information. 
obtained from the environment. Okay, so for the actor network, it's going to be the input is going to be observation, and the output is going to be the nine possibilities that we have, uh, the nine combinations. And fr uh, if you remember from the action information, we have these nine elements. So this discrete categorical, categorical actor is smart enough to figure out that this actor is going to have nine possible values that are going to be connect connected to the elements. And then therefore, those are going to be the output for the two thrusters. So it's able to connect all of that using the action information. So again, uh, the input uh, is similar. And we use a soft layer at the end to get the output. You can see that we have nine outputs for each nine combinations of the thrusters and the observation and fully connected layers and relos in between as always. So we convert that network to a DL network and we already have the observation and action info so we can create the discrete categorical actor and now we just need some options for the PPO agent. The learning rate 1 to the negative uh, 1 to multiply by 10 to the negative 4 and then we have experience horizon. It is basically that we're going to have uh, 600 steps before we start training uh, the agent just to capture uh, training data initially. Uh, we're going to have uh, the entropy loss weight. This is to encourage exploration to avoid local minimum. And we have the actor options, the critic options, and some other uh, parameters like this one. This is to, to encourage uh, basically finishing early. The longer it takes, the less reward you get. So with the agent options, the actor and the critic, now we create the agent. Okay, so we can train it. Uh, the, the article is going to use 20,000 uh, maximum episodes, 600 steps per episode, and stop when the reward is at 430 so we're going to have a positive reward, as you can imagine, because of the positive 500 positive reward we got on a soft landing. So these training options, along with the agent and environment, are going to be used with a train method to train the agent. And it took uh, two hours, almost two hours and a half to train. You can see that the reward is very low at the beginning and eventually it reaches out to 400 uh, as expected. But uh, I'm not going to spend two hours, so I'm going to use the, the train agent. So when I load this, I'm going to get a train agent in here. So I'm going to use the untrained agent. I want to see how bad it behaves. So right now this agent has in the networks random weights. So let's take a look uh, at how bad uh, does it look. So I'm going to use the plot method and we have our environment here. Actually, uh, this is confusing. You might think that this is a, f a function from Malab or something like that, but it's really is really a method, the method that we saw in the lander vehicle in here. So you can see that it has a, a plot method in here. You can see it in here. This is the visualization. So is the environment itself is going to be in control of how you visualize it. So you can see the visualization in here. So the, here is your vehicle. It's a very simple visualization. And now the simulation options, we are going to have 600 steps for the simulation and we're going to have five uh, simulations. And so let's run it to see how bad it goes without training. And you can see it goes out, it goes out and it crashes. Okay. So now let's use the train agent. Let's going to load it. And now uh, for reproducibility, let's set the C to 10 and Again, let's let's run it again. You can see that it's landing very close. This the the final one was almost perfect. Okay, so now a uh, list. Uh, no, I'm not gonna go in detail of how this plotting goes, but it's gonna take all the information. So let's just run it to get the statistics. Okay, so here they are. And you can see that for the five simulations, only one uh, was able to make it in the center. The I think the final one, and but all of them were able to reach zero position, and the velocity. All of them were able to stabilize it, and also the 
the x velocity was stabilized uh, as well to zero the angle all of them were able to reach zero and velocity angular velocity is zero as well and in terms of landing this is good all of them were able to to reach a soft landing okay so that's it for the video thank you for watching